Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. Want to talk tonight about the London Gold Vault. Now this is a big story lately. A lot of people are talking about it. Max Kaiser, of course Alistair McLeod who broke it. Um, it we're on Harvey Organ's site. Uh, GATA, everyone's talking about it. So let's read this uh, article from Chris Powell on Harvey Organ site and then I'm going to try to delve deeper into this. Uh, this is Tuesday, July 30th. The Bank of England refuses to explain what appears to be a huge discrepancy in its accounting of the gold it holds in custody. A difference of as much as 1,200 tons between the total reported in the bank's annual report in February and the total reported in a virtual tour of the bank posted this month at the bank's internet site and we're going to go to that in a bit. The discrepancy was noted by Gold Money Research Director Alistair McLeod last week during an interview with Max Kaiser on the Kaiser Report program on the Russia Today television network. Responding to McLeod's assertions, your Secretary Treasurer wrote to the bank's public information office Sunday seeking clarification about the bank's custodial gold a reply was quickly sent from the bank, but it was unclear. So your secretary treasurer wrote back asking for plain answers to these questions. One, will the bank confirm any difference in the amount of gold reported held in custody in February and the amount in custody reported by the new internet site application? Did Alistair McLeod misconstrue anything about the Bank of England's custodial gold in his remarks on the Kaiser Report program on Russia Today? Three, is the bank declining to acknowledge changes in the amount of gold in its custody? If so, could you explain why? Four, does the bank prefer to be reported to be declining to acknowledge substantial changes in the amount of gold in its custody? A reply received today from the head of the bank's public and internal Communications Division's Chris Shadforth provided affirmative answers to questions 3 and 4. Quote, the number of bars mentioned in the app cannot be used to infer a change in the amount of custodial gold held by the Bank of England as the figure is deliberately non-specific. Shadforth wrote, the bank will not be offering any further comment on this matter. That is, the information provided to the public by the bank about its custody of gold is for entertainment purposes only, and the facts of surreptitious intervention by central banks in the gold and currency markets are not to be discussed in accordance with the findings of the secret March 1999 report the International Monetary Fund revealed by GATA last December, which related that central banks concealed their gold swaps and leases to facilitate secret market intervention. So McLeod will stand uncontradicted and participants in the financial markets, at least the few who pay attention, may, be, may fairly assume the smashing of the gold price in April well may have been related to a huge outflow of metal from the Bank of England's vault. And once again, the great asset of Western central banking in surreptitious market manipulation is shown to be the refusal of mainstream financial news organizations to put specific and critical questions to central banks and to report their refusals to answer. So, great summary from Chris Powell of GATA. Now, I wanted to look and try to dig a lot deeper into this English gold vault story. This is really important because we're at a time of shifting uh, power, power transitions in the world. The power of the world is shifting to the east. It's shifting away from England. England is a former power. It's a shell of what it used to be. And uh, so I want to look at this kind of PR uh, attempt that the Bank of England has made. Now, there are three things I want to cover, and the psychological importance of these things is, is really critical because there's a reason why the Bank of England is doing what it's doing. So just some facts to throw out there real quick and keep these in mind when we're looking at this stuff. The Bank of England claims that their reserves are around 300 metric tons. Supposedly, the latest reports are that China is importing 200 metric tons per month. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and look at the actual reported reserves that all the countries have. 
and we're also going to look at the uh, foreign exchange reserves and try to do some deduction from that but before we do that let's start off with some of the propaganda I'll say that's come out of the Bank of England and you have to ask yourself why now this stuff started back last December and it actually started with this video that came out from a, a private group it was from one of the universities I believe it was the uh, University of let's see well I don't have it here uh, Well, it was one of the English universities. Anyway, so this has the professor, Martin Polyakov, talking and touring this uh, gold vault here. Now, I want you to note here, this is not the vault that we see in the other videos. Keep that in mind. Uh, there's some differences, but let's play a little bit of this first. But these really are solid gold bars, and it's quite extraordinary there isn't any smell because metals don't smell and it's very quiet because of the thick walls and to keep it secure the weather's been very cold recently so note here that these stacks are six high and that's going to be very important because the other ones that we see are not six high they're four high kind of strange here it looks like it's in the middle of a parking garage or something really strange and I was ready to be shivering, but it's nice and warm. But I suppose gold colour also gives you a feeling of warmth, so it may be partly psychological. The reason why the bank has got this store is because not only the Bank of England, but other central banks like to keep some of their money reserves in gold because the price of gold is very stable, or the value of gold compared to the value of currencies which can go up and down and so every country has a certain proportion of its reserves in gold so the Bank of England we're going to find out only has 300 metric tons left and uh, there's a much much larger amount of gold stored here supposedly now I don't know whether that's true or not but the question to keep in mind is if that's true that as much as 10 to 20 times the amount of what England owns is stored in England. Why? Why would you keep your gold there? And if you look at the statistics, the UK at the moment has about 310 tons of gold in its reserves. But there's much more gold here than that because it belongs to all sorts of people, not just to the Bank of England. This vault is part of a complex of different rooms. I haven't seen the other rooms. But all together, if you look at the bank's annual report, it's worth £197 billion. That is 197,000 million pounds. And that's quite a serious sum of money. The people buy and sell the gold, and each block of gold has its own number, like your car has a registration number, and when people buy and, and trade the gold, they don't actually take the bar home, but just that number is transferred from the seller's account to the buyer's account. And the gold just sits here quietly. Okay, so I want you to note that, because if you remember the reports about the quote-unquote cages that were under the Federal Reserve uh, before 911, we don't really know. But supposedly the reports were that they wheeled the gold from cage to cage. There aren't any cages here. And you can see, if you look, we'll see later in the gold tour, there doesn't seem to be a lot of moving around of this gold. So it's not like these shells are owned by a particular country. And we'll see in the virtual tour that uh, just on the one vault, England really only possesses maybe a quarter of the space of that vault. So the question is immediately, then how is the transfer done? Apparently, the transfer is only done on paper. So every one of these bars is recorded in some kind of ledger, and they just simply transfer the ownership on the ledger. Now, that's not what we have traditionally believed as far as the movement of gold from cage to cage.
Apparently, the oldest bar of gold here has been here since 1916. That's the First World War, nearly 100 years ago. But the beauty of gold as a chemical element is that it's very unreactive. So it looks just the same now as it did in 1916. It hasn't tarnished. It hasn't got oxide layers on the surface. It hasn't started creeping, changing its shape, and so on. So come over here, because they've given me two bars that we can look at. OK, so we've got the nutty professor here. He's going to go look at these bars. Uh, we're going to cut with this. But what's the important of this, importance of this? This is the first video that they brought out. And they bring out with the nutty professor here. You can see right here on his tie. Here's the elements. He's got a tie of the elements of the periodic table. So they start off with a PR campaign with the nutty professor here assuring us about the elemental value of gold. That was the beginning of their PR campaign. Now the next big important thing was the queen touring touring this. This isn't the same vault you can see here. There's only four rows high, so this is a different area, but we've got the queen now touring the vault. So now we're just going to go and have the Queen and the Duke ask a bunch of stupid questions. But you can see here another PR campaign by the Bank of England that has only 300 metric tons of the gold. So obviously there's nearly 20 times that amount here that's owned by other countries if any of this is actually real and so we have our second PR campaign to try to show the integrity of this vault now the last one was referred to uh, by Harvey Organ and uh, that is the virtual tour and uh, this is the virtual tour this is on the site of the Bank of England. They released this in June. This is what Alistair McLeod is referring to. Now, if you look at this room, you can see here that, uh, well, let's go over to the other side. You can see that we've got 108 and 110. So they're numbering these, uh, these blue columns. Each one holds four rows or four shelves each one of these shelves is one metric ton so we've got four metric tons per shelf and you can see here we've got 180 if you try to guesstimate I tried to guesstimate these should count down to uh, their three deep here so you're going to increase by three and it comes to roughly 200 and something uh, and my guesstimate of this room was that it contains 832 metric tons. So that's not going to be the entire holdings. This is just going to be one room. But even just using this one room, uh, the Bank of England own, only owns approximately a third or so of what's in this room. So the question is, and it comes up again, is how is this accounted for there doesn't seem to be any markings on any of these shelves for ownership uh, the only thing we would have would be the serial numbers on the bars and which shelf they're on so it's very clear from this that there must be just a transfer on a ledger so this is the third piece of PR campaign by the Bank of England to try to, in my mind, reassure the world of the security of their gold reserves. And probably, in my mind, it would be to stave off a run on this gold. So 
let's look at the actual gold picture worldwide and uh, we'll see how far down on the list this vault actually uh, the the London holdings actually are so this is from the Wikipedia article uh, gold reserve a gold reserve is the gold held by a central bank or nation intended as a store of value and as a guarantee to redeem promises to pay depositors note holders e.g. paper money or trading peers or to secure a currency at the end of 2004 central banks and investment funds held 19 percent of all above ground gold as bank reserve assets it has been estimated that all gold mined by the end of 2011 171,000 tons at a US price of 1500 per troy ounce we need to change that to about 1300 reached on the 12th of April 2013 one ton of gold valued at 50 million dollars total value of all gold ever mined would exceed 8.2 trillion so we have to ratchet that down probably down to at least seven or even less seven trillion it talks a little bit about the IMF holdings and I don't even want to go into the IMF there's the history of the World War II and the Nazis and the movement all the way down to Dakar from the Belgium holdings but you'll have to dig into that yourself now here are the officially reported gold holdings the International Monetary Fund regularly maintains statistics of national assets as reported by various countries so here's the holdings this is the tonnage now the United States claims as of July 2013 so that's fairly recent the United States claims to have over 8,000 tons Germany in second place with 3,300 tons the IMF 28 Italy with 24 France with 24 and China with a thousand now that is hard for me to believe considering that we're getting reports that China is getting 200 tons a month and uh, so my suspicion is that the amount in China is tremendously underreported now you can see the share of Forex reserves that this amount only amounts to 1.3 percent of China's Forex reserves and you can see that the United States it represents three quarters of their Forex reserves so for China to catch up with the United States they would at least have to increase this number by 50 fold so we'd be talking about 50 thousand tons or we'd be talking about one-third of all the gold reserves of the entire world now the Bank of England is all the way down here in 18th place they're behind Saudi Arabia Venezuela Portugal Taiwan Turkey India the Netherlands Japan Russia, Switzerland, China, France, Italy, etc. So the big question is why if England is so poor, is so gold poor, and we, we know that England certainly isn't any kind of manufacturing powerhouse. They don't appear to be any type of military powerhouse. So one would have to ask the question, why would all of these other countries that have much more gold than England England trust their gold to the vault at the Bank of England and I think the answer to that question is they probably are starting to wonder that same thing themselves and hence we have these reassurances three reassurances now by the Bank of England about how secure their gold reserves are so let's look over at the list of countries by Forex reserves now this is Forex reserves in US dollars of course the US dollar is the primary foreign exchange reserve because it's the world standard right now with the petrodollar you can see that China tops 
the forex reserves with 3.4 trillion dollars in forex reserves and Japan with 1.2 the eurozone Saudi Arabia Russia and Switzerland and then we have Taiwan so if we look at Asia you can see Asia comes here with Singapore Hong Kong Korea Taiwan put all of Asia together I would estimate that we're looking at probably five trillion dollars in Forex reserves now if you remember on the gold reserves we were told here that at the time that this was reported the value of all of those was about 8.2 trillion and now we know that it's lower with the current price of gold so we're talking my estimate was seven maybe as low as six so what does that mean with the Asian countries at roughly five trillion dollars in forex reserves and all of the gold in the entire world probably only worth six to seven trillion that tells you that there is a very very big crisis in the gold market it means that gold is tremendously undervalued and this explains to you why you're seeing 200 tons a month of gold going into the People's Republic of China why is the Bank of England allowing this to happen why is the LBMA allowing this to happen why is the United States government allowing this to happen wouldn't it be in their interest to revalue gold much much higher if gold were revalued to ten thousand twenty thousand a hundred thousand dollars an ounce the bleeding of this gold into China would significantly slow because of it would reduce the value of their forex reserves but at the present time we have gold bleeding out of London now this vault supposedly is connected directly with the LBMA so the LBMA uh, is connected with the Bank of England and the gold delivered on the LBMA supposedly is stored here and comes out of here that's the reports I've read I don't see any indication if this really is gold uh, there's a lot of questions I don't know if this is real gold I don't know if it's their gold I don't know anything about this but I can tell you by looking at this vault it does not appear that any of this gold is coming in or going out of this vault there are no tracks on the floor there's no way of accounting for who owns what this gold just seems to be sitting here as the good nutty professor indicated it's just uh, ledger changes so that is a big question if there's gold bleeding off the LBMA where is it coming from it does not appear to be coming from out of these vaults it seems like the Bank of England is very keen upon convincing the world that this gold is very secure and uh, this is the best place to keep it but uh, I would say uh, quoting the old uh, Shakespearean phrase methinks they doth protest too much and we'll talk to you next time